Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish lock out on the boat. It is a very blustery day today. <laughs> it is absolutely howling. We are drifting at best part of 2.2 knots and that's just with the wind. Yeah, we've got a very strong northerly wind today. I have bought a new camera and I need to catch some bait for tomorrow. So today is just going to be a scratcher. I'm going to scratch about, just play around with my new camera. Try and figure out how to use it best and incorporate it into the videos. And at the same time, I've got my wetsuit because I want to check all the hull of the boat. And I'm going to try and catch some bait. Very rarely do we get good weather windows at this time of year. Tomorrow is one of those weather windows. I don't want to have to be wasting time finding bait tomorrow so I'm going to try and catch it today. I don't know if you saw what I did there, all I did was I just turned the wheel a little tiny bit, turned the engine across, you see how quickly it spun me around then. Yeah, it's a howler today. Let's get going. Ah, that one's quite cool actually. I'll have to remember this angle. It makes everything look really long. And this one, the boat looks about eight foot. <laughs> <laughs> Boat looks like a bathtub. I'm fishing for squid. <laughs> the method for it is quite simple, you just use squid jigs. Oh, we might have a Yeah. That. That right there is what I was after. <laughs> oh, well, that worked quite well. And all I'm using is just little squid jigs. Now, actually, I was recording what was happening there on the live scope, and you saw, I saw two squid come in, and I thought, oh, I'll have one of them. So, yeah, I'll put that in here now. Just left of centre, you can see my squid jigs. And on the right, here comes two squid. Stunning the creatures, aren't they? Oh yeah, it's just a tandem rig like that. Now, not only are squid delicious, but they're also really good bait. All I did was I just dropped it to the bottom and just left it there, just a couple of inches off the bottom. Dropped down until the lead hit the bottom, then brought it up a few inches and just letting the rock of the boat like agitate the lures. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish a single, fish a single on my spinning rod as well, just for fun. Yeah. I thought to myself, I mean, it was, it's howling a gale of wind today. And I thought to myself, I'll pull in here where it's, where it's sheltered. And I'll try and find a squid. I might give this half an hour. I'll have a little bit of a troll around in here. I'll go out and try and locate where the mackerel are. We might have another squid coming through here. Just watch that rod tip. I'll have a troll around, find well, where the mackerel are, see if we can't get some out of bait. I don't know if I'm going to go so far as to fish some lures on a reef today because it is sloppy. Yeah, I'm going to have to find somewhere shelter to go and put the anchor down. Got one. Oh, lost it. 
that might have been a cuttlefish. Because I'm fishing down near the bottom, there is a chance of a bycatch of cuttlefish. Which I think is what's just attacked this. It's more of like a, well more of an aggressive strike. Than a, than a squid and a squid when it tries to swim away is like a lunge like that where the cuttlefish can get really heavy just like your rod arches on it and then it starts pulling away very subtle differences in the net. That's what we're after right there. All they do is when the squid attack the lures when the squid attack these lures these backward facing spikes get stuck on their tentacles. He's starting to wink. Yeah, beautiful looking creatures, aren't they? But oh, they are messy. little fish I've covered this in some of the squid fishing videos before about dispatching of them the quickest and most humane way to dispatch a squid is to give it a quick chop at the back of the head yeah it's just it's literally like lights out Part of a defence mechanism that squid, cuttles and octopus have all got is they do a jet think, do squirt inkery, which is why I'm, I'm going to end up black today. So you'll notice that when I scoop them up in a net, I don't bring them straight aboard, I wait for them to shoot out any water they've got inside their body. I wait for them to shoot, shoot out any water they've got inside their bodies. Because they mix seawater with the concentrated ink inside themselves and then eject it. So if you let them squirt all the water out when they're out there, they can't cover you in ink when they get you in here. We've had a little bit of a play around here. Yeah. I think we're gonna move across the bay, see if we can't find some mackerel. Maybe stop off on a reef and then try and find somewhere sheltered to put the anchor down. And get me wetsuit on. <laughs> That's the plan. We'll see what happens. I might put my wetsuit on early because it looks like we've got some clouds coming over. like a bass.
this is this is a little bit extreme. I keep saying to people, if you only ever go out in your boat in good weather, you'll never be able to handle your boat in bad weather. I mean, this is this isn't great. This isn't very nice. But it's it's not unsafe. It's manageable. And as shows you there, I managed to get straight in on the fish. <laughs> Now I put a measure on this, I bet this is about legal. This just shows you how small legal is. Legal limit for bass is 42 centimetres. This bass is 41 centimetres. I won't take them until they're along like between 47 and 50. Okay, there you go, first fish. Bass don't mind it when it's a little bit rough. You'll probably find some of the best bass fishing you'll get will be when you can barely stand up. Yeah, I prefer to take bass when they're between like 47 centimeters and 60 centimeters. Perfect size. Any bigger than that and they're, they're like a proper breeding stock fish. And any smaller than that and they're just too small. <laughs> Staying connected to the lure in this isn't easy. Fish has struck at that and turned the lure on itself. Currently drifting at 2.3 knots as well. Shows you how windy it is. <laughs> as bad as you can see the weather is right now, I've just had a tuna jump right next to the boat. <laughs> now that was exciting. Difficulty is staying in contact with the lure because the wind's that strong and it keeps blowing the line because the lure's only really light, it keeps lifting it in the water. Ooh, I want to hold on to that one because it feels like a bass. Pollock pretending to be a bass. Yeah, usually Pollock give like a crashing dive, whereas bass just kind of shake their head. Yeah, this one, I think it was just pretending to be a bass. <laughs> I will confess. The forecast is a little bit stronger than it was, an it was anticipated. But I'm here now. Drifting at 2.6 knots. <laughs> it's impressive. Well, I gave it a go. 
Right, I've dropped down the course a little bit and found myself some shelter, so I'll put the anchor down. This is for two reasons. I'm going to be putting my wetsuit on. I don't quite know what the clarity of water is going to be like, but that doesn't matter too much because I'm inspecting the hull of the boat. My boat is now anti-fouled and I'm going to check it all off, maybe give it a quick clean off. So rather than trailering the boat out and scrubbing it off, I'll put my wetsuit on, go underneath and scrub it off. Also at the same time, hopefully if the clarity is okay, I might have a scoot about and try and use this new camera, see what it's like underwater. The sun has just come out onto me. I take that as a good sign. Let's get changed and get in the water. The first thing that I always like to do when I'm doing this is to dive down and check the anchor. Not only because I find it interesting, but also when I'm out and swimming about, I don't want the boat to drift away. That one's a little small. Anchor's set right. Perfect. Ooh, what's that? There is a patch of the antifoul that's come away. That's going to need sorting.
the legal book. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'll let that one go. It was a really pretty pink one. Yeah. Any luck, that'll breed. There'll be more pink ones in the years to come. That one's a monster. <laughs> that one's a monster. Oh, this is a hard part now. Of <laughs> course, we get trained. Oh, it's chilly. Water temperature's at about 11 degrees. Yeah, cleaned off the bottom of the boat and had a good look around. Well, I looked around for about 20 minutes. Managed to find myself a couple of nice scallies. So, what we'll do is because we've done everything we need to do, I think we're going to go back and try a little bit more fishing. Go on. I'll have one more cheeky try for a squid before I head in. I had to run back over that reef and it was foul. <laughs> so I just headed straight back here. Whoa. Yeah. Now that the tide's turned, you've got wind against tide down there and it's just sloppy. So yeah, I'll have a drift around here for another squid. Then I'll head back in. Temperature's definitely dropping. <laughs> Times of year in the summer, the water temperature go up to 19 and a half degrees. Right now, as we sit, it is 10.7. Air temperature's <laughs> about the same. So air temperature's about eight degrees. Well, got my cap on a bit tight. Yeah. I'm steaming about and there's a lot of spray coming over the boat, it's sometimes easy to wear a cap. Here we go. And one final squid. That colour change on those is just phenomenal, isn't it? I'll really quickly show you how to dispatch them. Now the quickest and simplest way to dispatch a squid is to just give it a hard knock right there and the colour just drops straight out of it, watch. See? Gone. Food fit for a king. Whoa, the temperature's dropping now. Sun is just about to set. I did manage to winkle out one more squid so I am over the moon with that. I didn't get my size bass, but get it next time. Yeah, I call that quite a productive day. I'm going to have to get moving because I have got quite a bit of tidying down to do because those squid are messy. Let's go. We have been blessed with a very short calm spell. So I've decided to take the opportunity to treat my lovely wife to scallops on the beach. These are the scallops from the other day. We're just building a fire now. We're going to be cooking these on them coals. When that dies down to a bit of coals, we're going to flatten them out and put these on it. I brought tea cakes too. Hmm? Hannah brought tea cakes as well. I didn't think you'd come through with the scallops. <laughs> Yeah. Whenever, we, whenever I come out cooking with James, he loves marshmallows afterwards. Hannah's not a massive fan of marshmallows, so she decided to bring tea cakes instead. Get these scallops prepped, let the fire die down, and we'll get cooking.
cross. This one was an awkward one. <laughs> that looks a really nice one though. I like it when the insides of the shells are really white. Yes, this one's probably going to have a bit of Like bluey this, in this it. This one will have a brown, bit of brown in it. This seems to be the older ones. Oh yeah, look. Oh, it's nice though. Yeah. Well, that's the difference. That's what. <laughs> Yeah, that dark patch there is all the stomach contents. So if you ate that, would it be likely that you got just, sick? Yeah, just be gritty. But you wouldn't you wouldn't get sick much out of these because I've had these purging for a couple of days. But um, yeah, it, just, it wouldn't be nice. It's like eat, eating cockles or mussels before you've purged them. That's just everything that filtered out, all the sand and all the bits of crud that's gone in there. I don't like eating them after they've been purged, to be fair. <laughs> if we got garlic, we're gonna stink at parents' evening. <laughs> Fire and garlic. No difference to me going. Usually, when I go and pick James up from school, I'm stinking a fish. Last few times, especially, I've come straight off the boat to go and pick him up. So I've usually got my face is covered in salt. You know, my clothes are stinking. And look at the difference there. Look at that one and that one. Both big ones, and they're still different. Very nearly in a water. Wow, look at the size of that one. I don't know what's supposed to happen. I've finished shucking off the scallops now and they're all waiting there patiently. It's amazing the difference, isn't it, how some of them come out brown like that. And the fire is just about to finish dying down. I'm just going to spread it all out in a minute. And we'll start cooking them all up. Just a sprinkle in the pot. Mm -hmm. Start spreading these out now. It do look lovely. This is why I should have brought my gloves. Is it a bit warm? Yeah, I don't think it's a bit. I didn't quite have enough cold to do them all at the same time. So this will be like a second sitting. You can see what I mean though, can't you? Yeah, about how hot we get. It's a scallop slider. There's a slip of them. Where's that come? Oh, has that come up <laughs> on the shelf? I was like, I don't remember bringing that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That looks disgusting. <laughs> Didn't you eat one of those? Yeah, they're not. They're not my favourite. I can't tell which ones are just garlic now they're cooked. Can you? They cooked so fast. Well, you could, you could feel the heat coming off the fire, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. God, I love that. The sun is really warm in this little bit as well, so it's actually quite toasty down here. Absolutely. 
absolutely perfect cut. I like it when they go just a little bit brown around the edges. I like a little tiny bit of crisp on it. Find yourself two, two stones. Got a bit left in that one for you. Thanks. I'll do the dishes. Alright, thanks. And now we'll just discard all these by returning them back to the sea. Easy clean up. Easy clean up. <laughs> Trick is to try and get them to float. Mine are, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, you're getting cocky, aren't you? Oh, that was a good one. That was a skill, that was a trick shot almost. <laughs> Wonder how many people walking down here now will find all these shells. Go, oh, there's loads of scallops here. No, they're in. My first attempt at toasting a tea cake for Hannah was going so well until I stopped paying attention to it. I'll just Try eat again. it like that. I can just eat it like that. It's fine. I'm not having this. <laughs> Take two. So pleased with yourself. Much better. Please. <laughs> There you go. That's your cooking done for the week, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to uh, wait for the fire to die down, maybe douse it off, pack ourselves up, enjoy what's left of the calm weather. I hope you enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later. Bye. <laughs>